Will the small 4K sensor on the iPhone 10 hold up to a DSLR filming at only 1080p? You might be surprised. Well, before we get into that, let's start with talking about the front facing camera. Well, it's absolutely killer. The front camera on this is better than the back camera on most phones. Some people even say it looks too good, but I'm okay with that. Now I cannot wait to use this on Cameo. It's a website where you can get a personalized video from me directly to you about whatever you want. To give you guys an example, this is a video that I sent directly to someone who booked me on Cameo. Sam, I want you to know, I'm gonna take this serious for a second. I want you to know that you have my full love and support. Um, you're gonna kill it in life, you know, you're gonna succeed in your goals if you reach for them Just work hard and live easy have fun with life And I know if I was going through something that you're going through I would just want to have fun and laugh. So look at Riley right now. Okay. I don't know where he's pretty funny He wants me to pet him really bad, but I mean, I don't know What do you do? You want me to dance for you or something Sam because you need to feel good Okay, I'm getting up me and Riley are getting hype right now. We need you to feel good. Okay, Sam. I love you I hope you start to feel better um, for real, okay, I, I've been through many of the situations you're going through and in all seriousness I really hope that you're starting to feel better and if you ever start to feel down watch this video look at us He's scratching and stuff dude. That's silly. That's what dogs do. That's not that silly, but Once again, Sam. I love you. Thank you so much for the support Hope to hear from you soon if you want one now that I upgraded to the iPhone X It'll be better quality. You can either click the link down below or go to bookcameo.com slash Kyle Hall I will see you guys there. So the back camera does film in 4k, which is what I did but the sensor size and lens size is so much smaller than my full-size DSLR that I don't really know what's gonna happen here. They're both in the $1,000 price range. I'm an Apple fanboy, by the way. I have an Apple Watch, the MacBook, the new iPhone, and I've had so many iPhones in the past, so don't think I'm trying to diss the 4K camera. I'm just genuinely wondering if a sensor this small and a lens this small can hold up to 1080p, but the sensor and lens being bigger. Let's find out. So I went outside today. I know, pretty rare of me but it was all rainy and gloomy outside. Thankfully, both of these are weather resistant. So with this shot right here, this is the iPhone filming at 4K, 30 frames per second. It looks good. There is nothing wrong here, nothing I can complain about. It's actually super sharp on the corner of the table and the, the rain droplets just look really beautiful. And it has some bokeh for a phone that is ridiculous. Now let's move over and take a look at my Canon 80D. As you can already tell, obviously a lot more bokeh, but that just makes sense from the sensor size and the lens. Now, it is a little bit more soft on the corner of the table there. You can definitely see a lot more detail in the 4K coming from the iPhone, which makes sense, it's 4K. So overall on that one, the ADD was obviously a lot more softer. Sometimes I prefer that. The 4K on the 10 was fucking impressive. Obviously, this is where the Canon will start to fail. With the iPhone, you can zoom in very far. You got more pixels to deal with on the iPhone, which once again is just crazy to say. I'm still not used to it. So let's take another shot here. This one is starting with the iPhone, and uh, we're looking at a pile of leaves, which is actually very beautiful in my backyard. We got a little rally going through. I'm honestly looking at this right now, and I'm so impressed. You know, I, I, this is my second day with the iPhone, so I'm still learning all this stuff, and that's why I wanted to put it to the test today. Absolutely great picture. Nothing wrong with it. Let's move to the Canon. Once again, right off the bat, a lot more bokeh. But if we're looking at crispness, that's a weird word to say, the iPhone gets it for sure. Yeah, not much to say there. Honestly, just the iPhone wins there in Christmas, and I sound like I'm saying Christmas, but you know what I mean. And uh, the Canon just has a lot more bokeh and still looks fine quality-wise. Now, this is where the iPhone kills the game. The dynamic range here is so impressive. I still could not believe it once I got inside and looked back at the footage, and even right now, I'm just, I'm shook, honestly. And that's what I wanted to do with this shot. I wanted to test the dynamic range, giving some shadows and darks to the sky, which was, it was a gloomy day, but still a bright sky, and it killed it. Now, all of these shots were all handheld, both the Canon and the phone, and to the Canon. Honestly, overall, the iPhone definitely wins this round. We're not really doing rounds of winning and stuff, but I gotta say the iPhone killed it in all ways. The Canon still looks great, just saying the iPhone wins that one for sure. So with this one, this is when it gets kind of tricky for the iPhone. Now when you watch Riley run here, it looks great. Crisp, colors are great, everything looks pretty good. But if you really look at it, there's a little bit of jitteriness to it. That's because of the size of the phone. There's more grip on the Canon, we'll look at the Canon's footage in a second. But there's not much to grip onto, it, does, it is stabilized. There is a stabilization mechanism in here, which works great. But the jitteriness is something that is just because of the size, but it is something that we have to talk about. 
Now, let's go ahead and go to the cannon. Now, there's still some jitter in here, and the cannon also has a stabilization method in the lens. But it's more smooth. I look at it like this. What's more pleasing to the eye? For this one, the smaller, more smooth jitters in the cannon wins for me. The quicker, less subtle shakes of the iPhone obviously are a downside, but that's for any phone. All right, that's not just this phone. It's the size, and that's that. I gotta say, the colors win for the iPhone. The colors look fine on the Canon, but overall, I'd give it to the, the colors on the iPhone there. You also have a two times zoom lens on this phone as well, two separate lenses. When using the zoom lens, I captured this absolutely incredible and great bokeh. Stabilization helped make this awesome, and the bokeh is incredible for a phone. Now let me just throw this in here, the phone does 240 frames per second in 1080p slow motion. And as you can see, absolutely kills it. Looks beautiful, looks great. My dog licking up some rainwater on the deck. He's nuts. <laughs> so overall, the iPhone has more sharpness and more pixels to deal with. Meaning you can zoom in, you can crop in, and the picture doesn't look cropped at all. You're, it doesn't look like you're losing pixels. You are, but you can do 1080p massively zoomed in. Meaning you can zoom into the 4K and make it 1080p without losing any quality. It looks great. The Canon, on the other hand, you cannot do that with. If you zoom in, you start to lose quality, the pixels start to become bigger, and it's just a mess. So that definitely wins with the iPhone. Now, for me, I enjoy the smoothness of frames more. You can do 60 frames per second on this and this, but the 30 frames per second on my Canon I seem to like better, especially in the Riley walking shot motions. And the jitteriness of the iPhone is obviously uh, let down a little bit, but not really. I say that because all phones will have that. It's a small form factor. With a Canon, it's not. There's more space to hold it, and your hands are away from the sensor a lot more. So that obviously has to go with the Canon. So you're like, Kyle, what was the point of this video? What are you trying to prove? That the 4K on the iPhone is a lie? And like, you should get a DSLR that does 1080p? It's much better? No. That's not what I'm trying to say. It's a completely stunning camera. It's absolutely beautiful. One of, if not the best camera on a phone to this date. If I ever start vlogging again, this will be my go-to. The back camera rules for B-roll shots. The front camera is amazing. The best one I've ever used on a phone ever. This was shot on the 10. Absolutely stunning. Also, if you guys want any of the things on the screen right now, you can go to my store, districtlines.com slash Kyle David Hall. The overall point of this video is to show, yes, this is true 4K, but it's not meant to replace a DSLR or a 4K cinema camera by any means. Now, I didn't think many people thought that it would be, but when people see 4K, they jump to conclusions like, oh my god, like, that's better than most $5,000 cameras, and that's simply not the case. It's a camera on a phone, and it's the best in the game. Thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end. You guys are the best. You guys are the reason that I do videos like this. And if you guys want a full review of the phone, I just got it yesterday. Leave it down in the comments. That might be next week's video or, or a video in the future. Kyforce, I love you guys so much. Thank you for everything. Once again, if you want my merch or a personalized video directly to you, check the links in the description. Love you guys, and I will see you next Monday. Bye, Kyforce. Have a good night.